Okay, so that worked out pretty good. So I'm going to close that. So now this switch has been configured, this switch has been configured, this switch, and this switch. I did these two switches before I started the video. Now all we have to do is do these two switches here. So we'll do S3 next. S3 is going to be fairly easy. Um, just open that up. I'll show you what I mean. I'm just taking a quick peek here at the gigabit ports. Gigabit ports 1 slash 1, 3 slash 1, and 2 slash 1. So 1 slash 1, 2 slash 1, 3 slash 1. Remember that. All right. Enable. This is S3 that we're doing right here. So conf t, hostname, S3, right? So we know what we're doing here. Um, uh, let's start off right off the bat, VLAN 5. We need to create VLAN 5. VLAN 1 is already there by default. Then spanning tab, nope, I'm sorry, control C, conf T once again, spanning tree mode, PV tab ST, right? So we set the spanning tree mode deliberately to PVST, although that's what it's already in. Um, and I believe this is PVST plus because if everything ends up working, we're using the 802.1Q protocol by default and not the ISL protocol. So that would mean that we must be using PVST plus. I'm just guessing, but that sounds good. All right, how about the interfaces? Interface GI 1 slash 1, gigabit 1 slash 1, and we will say SW switch port mode trunk deliberately make it a trunk or explicitly make it a trunk then up arrow and then explicitly tell it although we don't have to switch port trunk allowed VLAN 1 through 1005 all the VLANs alright and then I can just do up arrow and go to 2 slash 1 oh, I'm sorry 2 slash 1 enter and then switch port mode trunk and then switch port trunk allowed and that's done and then up arrow and then 3 slash 1 and hit enter on my keyboard then up arrow on my keyboard switch port mode trunk trunk allowed alright so we just manually configured the interfaces um, control C enter do show run and you can see that trunk, trunk, and a trunk. All right, that's it. That's all we see. All the other interfaces are shut down except for the ones we're using. So I'll close that. Now the last switch to do is um, this switch right here, S5. This one's going to be a little different because we're going to use a few different commands on it. All right, so I'm going to fire up S5 here and let's configure that. Enable conf t hostname s5 right um, vlan 5 which we need to add we already have vlan 1 spanning nope control c and then go back to global config mode we were in vlan configuration mode and that's why I did a control c once we did vlan 5 it put us in VLAN configuration mode, and then we need to get out of it and go back into global config mode to do this. Spanning tree, span tab, spanning tree mode, uh, PVST, right? Uh, spanning tree mode, PVST. Okay, great. Now we're running PVST. Let's configure our gigabit 2 slash 1 first. That's the only gigabit trunk that we have. So we'll say interface GI 2 slash 1, right? Then SW tab switch port mode trunk and then switch port trunk allowed VLAN 1 through 1005. Alright, beautiful. Now we need to, we've configured the trunk, we've put it into the uh, PVST mode, and now what we need to do is we need to configure these interfaces that are going to our clients, 
right? So these interfaces are fast Ethernet interfaces, and they need to be, this one needs to be on VLAN 1, an access port on VLAN 1, and this one needs to be an access port on VLAN 5. We're also going to make them port fast technology. So we're going we're gonna to use port fast, which will put these ports immediately into forwarding mode. Now the other ports, most ports on switches by default go from blocking to listening to learning to forwarding. But since these ports are not really um, doing any negotiations with other switches, in other words, they're not trunk ports connected to other switches, so they're not getting BPDUs or bridge protocol data units or messages from STP. It's not talking to other switches, it's just talking to the client. So these ports can go directly into forwarding mode, right? because they're not needing to negotiate other um, control messages from other protocols like STP or 802.1Q or VTP or anything like that. So what we'll do is we'll do that configuration to them also. All right, so what do we mean by that? Well, we'll just show you. Okay, so we'll say, and what ports are they? They're 4 slash 1 and 5 slash 1. 4 slash 1 needs to go to VLAN 1. So we'll do that one first. Interface FA 4 slash 1. It's fast Ethernet 4 slash 1. And then we don't need to do this, but we'll do it anyway. Switch port, because by default, it's an access port, right? Switch port mode access, and then switch port access VLAN 1, right? And then what we'll do is we'll say span tab spanning tree and then we'll do a question mark and you'll see there's port fast so we'll say port fast and hit enter and it gives us a message and it tells us right off the bat this should only be done if it's connected to a host and not to another um, not to another switch or to a hub or anything else like that right it could cause bridging loops having it go directly into forwarding mode and not negotiating other modes right uh, not listening to other switches that might want to, like STP, shut down the port by blocking it. Uh, port fast has been configured. Okay, so, all right, that's done. Also, and I'm not sure how this really works, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to say spanning tree, and I'm also going to turn on BPDU, spanning tree, BPDU guard. And I'll just put a question mark, is there anything? And then I'll say enable. So spanning tree BPDU guard. Now what's that going to do? Hit enter. And now the BPDU guard, that's going to make it so that this port does not receive any BPDUs. Well, it's not going to receive it anyway because it's not connected to another switch, but I just thought I'd throw that in there for fun. All right. Um, so now we have to do the other interface. So that's 4 slash 1. Now we'll do 5 slash 1. So we'll say switch interface 5 slash 1 enter and switch port mode access and then switch port access VLAN 5 and then spanning tree port fast and then up arrow spanning tree BPDU guard enable so now we have pretty much everything configured on this switch that we're going to need right now before when we were just we just had one instance of spanning tree protocol without VLANs we saw which ports were in blocking mode by the little orange light now you'll see they're all green lights it looks like there's no spanning tree but there is what it what there is is two instances of spanning tree there's um, a root bridge for VLAN 1 and there's a root bridge for VLAN 5 and so possibly you know multiple ports could be blocked depending on the VLAN